It's a it's no big secret that today's my birthday. I wanna somehow 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 got on Facebook. I'm not sure how that happened this morning, but somehow it got on Facebook. But one of the things I've noticed in 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 my time is that right about now I'm pretty content with life. I'm pretty content with the way things are. I'm pretty content with with how my family is and how I love them and how they love me. I'm pretty content where I'm at when it comes to to being financially secure and being able to not have to worry about whether I'm going to be able to pay my electric bill or not. I'm pretty content with the things that I've learned and the experiences that I've had in life, as diverse as they might be. I'm pretty content. I kind of like where I'm at. I kind of like being able to go out on the front porch and sit down and watch the sun rise over the tree line. I'm pretty content going out and watching the chickens peck on the ground and coming back in an hour and a half later. And my wife wondering where I've been. I've just been watching chickens. (laughs) Pretty content with the way things are going. I'm happy. I kind of like it. I kind of like being able to come to worship in this place, but, but, but more than anything, regardless of where I am, being able to worship my God and Savior without having to worry about it, I'm pretty content in my life. Being content to be able to accept your situation wherever it is, because in all that contentment, life for me is not perfect. Life for any of us isn't perfect. There are always challenges. There are always things that we're going to have to work through. There are always problems in our lives. There are always bumps in the road. But in all that, to accept your situation and circumstances that you are in, to be content, to accept them, and move forward, is an awesome, awesome thing. We can be content even in difficult times. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 2-10, to 10, it says this, These are the things you are to teach and insist on. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy and strife and malicious talk. Evil suspicions and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Samuel. Timothy. Timothy says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. If we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmless desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. The Word of God for the people of God. God. Some people, eager, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. You can change the word money to whatever it is you have in your life that takes the place of Jesus Christ. We need to put first things first in our lives. It's not the first time I've said it, but it's something that I need to be reminded about over and over and over again. And if you've not heard me say it before, you get a message because I need to hear it. Sometimes we have to put first things first. And some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves 
with many grieves. Some people eager for money. Some people eager for fame. Some people eager for notoriety in their jobs. Some people eager for a football game. Some people eager for you place whatever it is that gets in the way of putting Jesus Christ in your life first. You put that in the sentence where money is. Because being eager for anything other than Jesus Christ causes grief in our lives, causes challenges in our lives, causes problems in our lives. Timothy reminds us that we need to be godly and content. To be godly and content brings great gain, he says. Be happy with where you are. We didn't have to wait for Jesus to come to hear that message, Moses went up on the mountain and brought down Ten Commandments and one of them was not to covet your neighbor's stuff. Be happy with what you have, with what God has given you. And know that He loves you and He cares for you. And know that whatever it is that He's given you, whether it's a little or whether it's a lot, He gave you so that you could use it in His service. He didn't tell the rich man who said, what can I do to get into heaven? He didn't say you weren't allowed to have any money. But he wanted him to understand how important it was to love God first before you love all the other things that are in our lives. He said you should be able to give away those things and believe in me. And the rich man walked away disappointed. Not because Jesus said that you can't have it, but you can't put it first. Trust me, he says. Trust me. Be content and be happy with what you have. That story comes out of Matthew chapter 10 verses 25 to 26 it said Jesus said to his disciples it's hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven and again I tell you it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God when the disciples heard this they were greatly they were greatly astonished and asked who then can be saved Jesus looked at them and said with men This is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. We can do anything. Anything we want. Anything we need. Anything we'd like to do. If we do it for God. God didn't say... Don't be a famous actor. But put God first and do it for God. God didn't say don't go and get a job that earns a lot of money, but put God first in your life. Don't make the job the idol. Don't make going to school the idol. Don't make playing music the idol. Don't make preaching the idol. Put God first in everything we do. And trust God that He will care for us. Trust that He will care for us. These words I can't read without glasses. In John chapter 14, verses 23 to 24, Jesus is promising the Holy Spirit to the disciples. He says, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves Me will obey My teaching." That's probably worth saying again. Jesus said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. This is the way to contentment. To trust and to to obey. He has our best interest. In mind, and he will always be with you. Don't confuse your free will with his will. 
We have the opportunity. We have the opportunity to make the decision to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. And in that, sometimes the choices we make as an individual and a collective are not the choices that God wants us to make. They are not the godly things in our life that allow us to be content. Humanity causes those problems. But Jesus will never let you down. He will never walk away. He will never put you aside. He is present, ready, willing, and able to help you through any circumstance that you might find yourself with. I was talking